You know, it's real important to get the students experimenting in the chemistry classroom, but you have to develop some skills, develop some techniques, and develop some understanding of chemistry. This is an experiment I do on the second or third day of school. I have given them the write-up of the experiment the day before. They take it home and they read it. It is only four or five paragraphs. It's very simple, but yet they have to come prepared. Now, one of the other aspects I do is have them read the questions to make sure they understand the questions to see what direction I'm trying to take in the particular lab. This is a lab where we're using simple chemicals like sodium bicarbonate, just regular baking soda. We are also using calcium chloride. Now, calcium chloride, I think it's important for the students to recognize that these chemicals aren't esoteric substances over here, but they have a lot of practical purposes. Most people have heard of baking soda, but what about calcium chloride? I also have containers of drying agents or desiccators where the active ingredient is calcium chloride. In the Midwest where we have snow, if you have snow melt, one of the active ingredients is calcium chloride. I also talk about how a lot of rural areas will spray calcium chloride solutions on the gravel roads during the summer because calcium chloride also absorbs water and therefore it minimizes the dust. So you try to connect a lot of different avenues where the student can connect with this lab. But we're going to use these two chemicals and we're going to use a solution of phenol red. It's an indicator. And then we're just going to use a baggie. And I'm very loose on the descriptions for a purpose, and I'll talk about that. But I just tell them to take approximately a teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate and put it in the bag. And what I like is to have them put it at one end of the bag. So they've got that at one end of the bag. And then holding that, what they're going to do is put about a tablespoon of calcium chloride at the other end. Now that I have that, I can seal up and get the chemicals off. And you have the two chemicals separated like that. Now, I'm going to keep those separate. And what I'm going to do is, you can measure this out, but I just recommend, and this is where it's very non-quantitative. I'm going to hold those separately. And then I'm going to put some phenol red in there, and I recommend about three full squirts of it in the bag. One, two, and we'll do three. And then what I'm going to do is have them seal up the bag. Just mix it up some and let it go. And they're supposed to make observations just like any good chemist. Now, I would have the student looking at the bag and trying to make as many of their observations where they're using their senses as possible. Are you able to hear something? There's a little sound going on. If you'd feel this, there is one end that's getting hot. It's exothermic. And then there's another end that's getting cold. And that's endothermic. And what else do you know about the bag? We'll just mix this a bit. And put it right back there again. 
But as you watch the bag, you can see that there's also an evolution of gas where the bag is swelling up with the generation of the gas. Now, I'll leave this up to you, what you're able to provide for your class. You can do this with freezer bags and maybe increase the chemicals just a bit where you got to be careful, though, because this could swell up enough that the bag could pop. And so you have to watch that with students, and the students are going to want to try to get as close to possible to pop the bag. But if you can see, the bag is swelling, and you've got a chemical reaction that has got generation of gas, it's exothermic, endothermic, and a color change. Now, we're not done yet. One of the main questions I have on the lab is, I have the students work in groups of two, and the main question I have is, how do your results compare with other groups? This is the first time they're doing a main experiment in my class, and it's amazing the answer. It's going to be typically, well, they're saying, we did the exact same lab, so my results were exactly the same as everyone else's. But what's nice about this lab is, one of these substances is going to get exothermic. One of these, as I said, is going to be endothermic, and it depends on how the phenol red mixes and what they're doing in terms of the mixing, what they see. And so some will say it's going to get hot first. Some will say it's going to get cold first. Some won't even notice the temperature. Some bags will swell up more than others. There are a lot of variables in this experiment. And so then I will talk about this with the students and say, well, what can we do to try to get some of those variables decreasing? And that's where we talk about being quantitative, where we can say, make a specific measurement like this. Make a measurement like that using volumes or masses. And so they're getting a little more consistent. But the bag has swollen. And so then, of course, what they have to do is clean up. And that's another whole process. And they can take it over to the sink and turn the water on. And as you can see, in the cleanup process, and you want to caution the students because guess what? They could be spraying water all over if it's forceful. But if you look here, guess what? You get another color change and it's amazing. As we have done this demonstration, this lab across the country, the variety of the types of water and the pH conditions, how the colors will change. Now, you can do this as a simple lab. Or another great aspect that you'll see in the write-up is, if you want to do this a little later, you can write it up and have the student perform it as an inquiry activity to find out which of these substances is causing the exothermicity. Which one is causing the endothermicity? Or which one is causing the evolution of gas? And they can try different combinations. It's up to your ingenuity how you want to create this lab and the level of your students and what you want to get. But this is a great beginning of the year lab that you can have a lot of fun with and the students thoroughly enjoy it. I hope you do too. Thank you much.